of this morning, sponsored by AT&T, your true choice, presenting the class of 2000. The newest crop of high school students has an impressive title. This freshman class is the class of 2000. They're teenagers now, all three and a half million of them, but they will be our nation's leaders in the 21st century. Who are they? What are their concerns? Will they be ready for the challenges ahead? These are questions that CBS News will be asking in the months and the years to come as we track the class of 2000 on every CBS News broadcast. This morning, Hattie Kaufman introduces us to some members of this, this class who won't be going to class. Yes. What's the catch? <laughs> well, you'll find out. We've all heard about homeschooling where parents become teachers. Well, now there's a radical variation on that theme. It's sometimes called unschooling, and it puts not the parent, but the student in charge. <laughs> I think I'm happier than kids who are in school. Um, in terms of academics, I don't think that I'm far behind. You just naturally learn things by living. For Jade Crown of Olympia, Washington, this day begins with a sailing lesson. A quick lunch, then off to a free rock concert. Was today an average day for an unschooler? There's no such thing as average for an unschooler. <laughs> There's no typical day? No. Not for me, anyway. Whoops, I did reverse. it backwards. <laughs> At age 14, Jade has replaced school with a free-form mix of home study and outside projects, like working with a Seattle film crew. With her mother working full-time, Jade decides what to do and when. You don't even have somebody in the house teaching you every day. Right. I, I have to seek out my own teachers. <laughs> Her neighbor, Mick Sonoda, is also an unschooler. It doesn't seem to be working. Yes, it is. From time to time, he and sister Anna get a lesson from their mom. But the curriculum is up to them. If there's something that she thinks that we need to know when we're going to go out and get a job or something, she just decides to let it wait until we realize that we need to know this and go and ask her to teach it to us. And it works pretty well. While most of the class of 2000 will be reporting to school buildings like this one, Unschoolers Nick and Jade will be looking for their lessons almost everywhere else. Their education is so vaguely defined, some critics are wondering if there's a real difference between unschooling and simply dropping out. Unschooling advocate Grace Llewellyn says there's an important difference. It's a mentality. It's about, I'm not leaving school because I don't want to learn. I'm leaving school because I do want to learn and school is in the way. In 1991, Llewellyn published the Teenage Liberation Handbook, a manifesto for school haters. School is not for learning. School is um, a prison. Read halfway through your book. I didn't, even, I didn't finish it until before I dropped out. Last week, Llewellyn hosted 92 unschoolers at her first not-back-to-school camp in the Oregon woods. I went to school for kindergarten and first grade. I didn't like it. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Llewellyn's formula? Quit school and do what you love. When you learn what you're interested in, and if you're really given encouragement, support, and free reign to really learn that, you're going to also learn just about everything else, or at least pieces of everything else, certainly what you need to know. Professional educators, for the most part, are decidedly unimpressed. It's probably one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. Kristen Obinson is a former high school teacher, now president of the Fairfax County School Board in Virginia. I suppose if they want to go off and be a potter or something, that you know, then they may be well enough prepared. But assuming that these are kids who want to take their place uh, in some kind of career, they're going to need to know specific things. But unschoolers and the parents who support them say the lack of structure actually gives them a leg up on the world. In the things that people study all day long at school, they're better than my kids. But in, uh, in a crisis, I'd want my kids functioning rather than someone who'd been following instructions for 10 years. And Jane, by one estimate, there are about one million homeschoolers in America, but no one really knows how many unschoolers there are out there. It's really upsetting, Hattie. Is it legal? Well, homeschooling is legal in all, all across the country, mm -hmm. but how it is monitored varies widely from state to state. So in some places, students have to come in and be tested. In other states, or it's whatever. And so that's where I think a lot of the unschooling is taking place. Amazing, the little boy who said he just didn't like school, so he dropped out after second grade. What if that kid decides in the year 2000 he wants to go to college? 
example, some college uh, admissions officers are actually intrigued when they see homeschooling or unschooling, and they might accept that student, but critics say, what's going to happen when the student actually gets in class mm -hmm. and discovers all that they don't know? Mm. Hopefully it will work out. Thanks, Hattie. Intriguing story. You're going to learn much more.